Vision is the best character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'll be honest, this scene wasn't my pick, but that of a friend's. After a recent binge of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he declared to me that he believes Vision, or the Vision, is the best character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, after watching the Marvelous Scenes, one Marvelous Scene YouTube videos, uh, many video essays that have come about since Endgame, um, it inspired me to look into it further. And so I found a particular scene, this one marvellous scene, that dictates the differences between Ultron and the Vision, and their ideological conflict. The scene in particular that I'm talking about is the one, I wouldn't exactly call it most famously, but it is the final scene with Ultron, where the Vision flies down and the... Ultron climbs up the mountain, they face off against each other and have an ideological battle rather than fisticuffs, rather than the classic, this is how we're going to beat the villain, by punching them. Instead, they analyse humanity and their part in humanity's history until Vision shoots a laser from his head and kills Ultron. But the point is still there that it's about the ideology. The scene eagerly displays the merits of humanity and the fate of humankind between these two godlike creatures, one being the technological version of Lucifer and the other being the technological version of God, Ultron Vision. Ultron argues that humanity is set for self-destruction, that it's, it's just in their nature, but unfortunately this is the way that he was risen, that he was born into a world and only looked at the worst of it, what humanity has created in its destructive path, where, uh, but not looking at the human path. Whereas Vision looks at the moral side and the ethical side to humanity and what they as a species and as individuals have learnt and have shown over the course of their history. You're afraid of you. Of death. You're the last one. You were supposed to be the last. Stark asked for a savior and settled for a slave. I suppose we are both disappointments. <laughs> I suppose we are. Humans are odd. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. But there is grace in their failings. I think you missed that. They're doomed. Yes. But a thing isn't beautiful because it lasts. It's a privilege to be among them. You're unbearably naive. Well, I was born yesterday. There is grace in their failings. I think you missed that. That is the key line from this scene that I've just shown you. This is the one marvelous scene that I've chosen of all the MCU that depicts exactly why Vision is the best character in the MCU. I do have evidence. Um, <laughs> now, the funny thing is, I watched a lot of these previous video essays looking into their one marvellous scene. A lot of people went both from an emotional reaction and some went from how a cultural reaction. Um, and some people wanted to go from an emotional reaction but instead went for the more cultural perspective. Um, 
on the other hand, want to look at this from minor league subjective, um, because it's more or less someone else's opinion, um, but more of an objective point of view for myself, looking at uh, both how my friend has seen this and has argued why and hence why this is my case, but also the fact of uh, this journal entry that I will actually be um, taking notes from and have built an essay around uh, that analyzes why Vision not exactly is the best character, but emphasizes the philosophies and the ideologies presented by the character. So I'm pretty much just giving you an excuse as to why I'm going to be reading from the laptop, because professionalism isn't exactly my strong suit uh, this early in the game, but I'm getting there. So Siddhant Adlaka uh, recently made a series of articles discussing the MCU uh, in the lead up to Endgame. Uh, this series was called Road to Endgame. In this particular article, Avengers Age of Ultron balances the legacies of gods, monsters, and human beings in one of Marvel's most underrated movies. In the article, he covers the basic ideological principles of our main Avengers cast, but I want to focus more on how he ends the essay discussing the, the ideological battle between Ultron and the Vision. He states... Ultron and the Vision represent competing schools of thought on humanity. They act as opposing narrative forces, pushing and pulling the world between their respective desires. So he specifies the ultimate difference between the two godlike creatures, uh, that Ultron sees destruction as the only path to salvation, whereas the Vision accepts humanity's imperfections. These two ideologies are reflections of their creator, in this case, Pretty much Tony Stark, of course, because he is their main creator. Um, Ultron, of course, is a reflection of the pre-Iron Man Tony Stark, which focuses more on arrogance and hence the embodiment of the worst part of his character. And obviously, through character development, why we like Tony Stark now rather than what he really was showcasing himself as in early Iron Man, of course. The vision is, as he claims to be, on the side of life, which Adlaka puts it is an affirming reminder of what the Avengers' objective ought to be. He continues, These competing narratives will determine not only the fate of humanity, but who the Avengers are at their core. Should they fail, they will fall in line with Ultron's view of the world, wherein humanity is only capable of destruction, and deserves to be replaced by a perfect race of soulless, metallic beings. From that point on, stories themselves will cease to matter. But should the Avengers succeed, despite their many failures in the past, they are aligned with the Vision's outlook, which he explains to Ultron in the forest, order within chaos, grace within failure, and of the beauty of human imperfection. The idea that people can still be good, even when intrinsically flawed. Ultron is a creation of the ideological worst of humanity, uh, something that in its infancy absorbs information that is only a reflection of the destructive power of humanity. Because of this, Ultron fails to understand humanity himself. Hence, he comes to only understand the art of war, but not the art itself, or the appreciation of art. The Vision, on the other hand, is created with much less of an end goal in mind, whereas Ultron is, he must be made so we can you know, defend you know, Earth from invading armies and creatures and whatever. However, the Vision is really just has no real, there's no goal for him. Like, Tony Stark isn't really in the mindset of he has to be made so he can be specifically here to defeat Ultron. It's more or less, this is probably the only chance we have to do something good, let's try it. So he bases him on the basic building bricks of Jarvis, a program written explicitly to protect. The vision is, to put it lightly, divinely inspired. He's made from the best that the Avengers can offer. You've got Iron Man's technology, Thor's otherworldly lightning, and well, Bruce Banner's engineering, but you especially have the material that Captain America's shield is made of, this being vibranium. He's symbolic of his creators and their collaborative goal of protection. He is a graceful creature who speaks with kindness um, and is a pure reflection of the best of humanity, emphasising a form of biblical symbolism, hence kind of the more godlike figure, whereas Ultron is the more Lucifer-like figure. Adlaka refers to the Eastern philosophy of Taoism in his article. 
The vision ascends to the sky in a golden cape, not unlike the heroic yellow emperor of Taoist religion, who rose to heaven in plain sight on the back of a golden dragon. Whereas magician Yi Fan Shan, another prominent figure in Taoist views on death, was said to have turned his own corpse into a sword, the way Ultron replaces his old bodies with newer, more destructive ones. The specific, if not purposeful, reflections of Taoism are present in Age of Ultron, throughout the dichotomy of Ultron and the Vision. They bring a thematic presence to their characters, which aren't unlike the other Avengers, who all have their own core themes and ideologies, but this opposition is the backbone of Age of Ultron. Finally, I'll conclude on these final passages to Udlaka's article. Ultron and the Vision are abstract enemies. The Avengers are imperfect beings who fall somewhere in between them. Ultron's army of thousands may be in perfect harmony with one another, but they're eventually bested by the varying abilities and perspectives of our discordant heroes. The dichotomy between Ultron and the Vision is the very basis of storytelling throughout history. It cuts to the heart of conflicting human impulses to create chaos and to cede to it, to control and to be controlled, to create divine beings and to believe that we're divinely created. Dualities we cannot begin to reconcile until we self-actualize for our own stories, drawn from our pasts and written with an eye toward our futures. This video was inspired by Nanavi Movies' collaboration with other YouTube essayists in their series One Marvelous Scene. Um, this, of course, is my response to it. Um, I guess, yeah. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe for more. Uh, you can find a link to the One Marvelous Scene playlist in the description, as well as links to my other YouTube uh, video essay playlists um, or reviews. I do all kinds of things on this channel, from video essays to movie reviews to short films kind of shit you'd usually expect from most YouTubers. My video essays are on varying different topics from movies to really anything film related mostly um, and they're all presented in different fashions as well from the basic voiceover stuff with visuals on top or something like this where it's face-to-face -face kind of interaction. Um, so of course there'll be links to everything down there in the description below. I'm also on Letterboxd. Just check out the description. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, See you guys next time. Adios.